Hello and welcome to the fourth and final part of our first session on 2D drawing within Rhino. This session will focus on adding in signs of habitation into your plans, including furniture, kitchen counters, tables, chairs, and sort of extra bits of life that will kind of bring your plans to life a bit more and add that next level of storytelling into the drawings you're producing. We will also be looking at how to add vegetation into your drawings, including trees and plants and grass and different ways of kind of showing these in a 2D drawing. We're going to start by looking at how to add different furniture into your plans. So you can see this is the plan we're kind of with, which is following on from the last session. I've added in a bit more detail into here, just some extra hatches, and I've kind of deviated from the original plan a bit by adding a kind of staircase up to this external walkway and also an outside patio area, which you can access through the kitchen, through this door here. So we're going to look at adding some kitchen counters, some tables and chairs, and also some living room furniture into this plan. Now, to do this, I would start by first sort of downloading what are called CAD blocks. And these are sort of ready-made pieces of furniture that you can add into your drawings. The easiest place to find these is a website such as this, and I'll kind of post a few links to different websites that you might be able to get CAD blocks from. And these contain kind of just series of different furniture examples, beds, tables, chairs. I'd always recommend kind of using these as a starting point and then adapting from there because it can take quite a while to draw out chairs and tables and it's a bit of a waste of time drawing them from scratch when you can just get them from here. These usually come in DWG format when you download them. And there's a few things you want to be wary of when you download and import stuff into your drawings and I'm going to just quickly go through that now. So we're going to take this table layout and we're going to import it into our Rhino file. So I'm going to go back to my model view, just on my top view here. And we're just going to go File, Import, when we're importing geometry we want to work with. And I'm just going to locate that table file which I've already saved and we're just going to open it in CAD. Now if it's in millimeters and it matches our model unit that's fine. Um, don't worry about these tick boxes I just use these as standard and hit OK there. So there you go you'll see that it's imported all of these in kind of this title block as well and there's tons and tons of different options of tables and chairs you can use in here. What I'll usually do is I'll select a few different examples and delete the rest because you don't really want everything else clogging up your model. Some of these are really kind of overdone like this one for example has got sort of loads and loads of extra lines you don't really need and stuff like this. So I personally I usually go for something a bit more simplistic like something like this. Maybe kind of something like that as well. And I try and stay away from the more detailed examples just because they can be harder to work with down the line. So I'm just going to grab a couple of different types here that I could work with and I'm just going to move those off the plan and we're going to delete the rest there. Now you can see here I've already sort of installed and downloaded a series of different CAD blocks for different things. We've got some furniture layouts here, some sinks, some hobs, some kitchen counters. Now you can see that when I select each of these blocks they're kind of grouped together and if we look in the properties you'll see these are actually block instances which is very similar to when we set up the doors and the windows in our previous sessions that they're kind of a block which means that we can make multiple copies of them and if we edit one of those copies it will then be the same in each of them as we go forward but what that also means that means we can't actually edit anything in this currently in its block state so actually what I'm going to do before I start working is I'm going to Let's take this table for example. We're going to first explode it. So we're going to break it back down into its key elements. And then we're going to move these on to a particular layer that I want. And I'm going to put these on my elevation fin layer. I'm putting them on that layer because the table will be in elevation. And we want the lines to be quite thin. So that's fine. And I'm then going to move that down onto my plan. Now, because I've got these hatches on here, it's quite hard to kind of see what's going on. So I'm actually going to lock my hatch file and hide it for now, just for ease of kind of being able to see stuff while I'm laying out my table and chair layout. So I've got this table here, and we're going to just put it in the kitchen. 
I've got quite a small kind of kitchen area here, so what I might do is I'm just going to rotate it, snap it to this wall, and I'm actually going to reduce this down so it's just half a table. Now, an important thing to look at when you've taken a CAD block online and imported it into your drawing is if the scale is correct, because sometimes the scale can be slightly off or they can be drawn in inches and then imported in and so the scale is all out. So it's good to just do a dimension check to check that these scales are lining up with what you expect them to be. So this table is 750 by 800. I mean, that's quite sort of standard table size. So I'm sort of happy with that. I'm just gonna tidy up these curves. And just check the chair size. 550, yeah, so that's about right. So I'm gonna just delete those two. Now, instead of grouping this back up as one block, I'm actually going to make the block and the tape, the chair and the table into separate blocks. So we're gonna make this a block. And just call it chair one. And then I'm not actually going to make the table a block because it's just a square. So I'm just going to join that together. So it's one line. And then I'm going to delete this chair here because we want to keep it as the same block. This chair one block. So we're going to just make another copy of this one. So something you might want to do is when you import in blocks, often the layout of the blocks is very rigid. You've got these chairs and they're kind of sitting next to the table but they're all perfectly aligned something i quite like to do is just sort of mix that up a bit and you might have a kind of chair slightly under the table and it might be twisted a bit just to make it look a little bit more, more natural in your plan like so like it's actually being kind of used and lived in and you can just kind of experiment with rotating those around and just giving it a bit more character and life. Often if you import the cab blocks straight in and you keep them really rigid, it's very obvious that you haven't really edited it or done any work to it and it doesn't look very kind of lived in. It looks a bit clean and static. So I quite like to sort of offset and rotate them a little bit just so it's kind of looking a bit more natural in the plan there. So I'm quite happy with that as it is. We're now gonna have a go at adding some of these kitchen counters. So these might be sort of low level counters I've got on the side of my kitchen. We're going to maybe go with this one for now. Move it into place. So with a kitchen counter, the usual depth of a counter is about 600 mil. So I'm just going to check that. It's about 630, 610, so that's about right. I'm going to just explode this again to break it down. And I'm going to actually take off some of the detail in here because sometimes in these CAD blocks, they're a lot more detailed than they need to be. And you'll find that when you've scaled this down and actually export it as a drawing, you've got too many lines and they block together and they look a bit blocky. So it's sometimes good just to trim off a few of those extra lines. And actually counters usually should be pretty much bang on 600 mil. So I'm actually going to draw that in, which is there and just trim off these lines. So. This is exactly 600. It's very good to just go around and edit your blocks before you use them so they're the right sizes for what you're trying to do because often their scales a bit off or the size is wrong. So I'm happy with that for now. So we're just going to turn that back into a block. Call this counter or cupboard maybe. I'm kind of imagining this is a low level cupboard in the kitchen. And then we're going to just rotate that along this back wall here. So very simple really, we're just kind of taking CAD blocks, exploding them, putting them onto the line weight that we want to use them on and then rotating them and putting them into position. And it's always good to sort of edit them just so they are working for what you want. And let's say I've just got a series of these here. It looks like it doesn't quite fit, so I might have to edit that last one. But we can very quickly start to kind of build up lots of different 
levels of habitation in this plan. And what I'm going to do now is using that method I just went through of taking the block, exploding it, putting it on the correct layer so it's the line weight is correct. Then we go back into our drawing. It looks right when it sort of sits with all the other lines within our drawing and slightly editing it so I can kind of work it into the drawing I'm doing. I'm going to do that for both the living room and the kitchen and start to add in some extra furniture in there. So I'm going to pause the video, add in furniture in the living room and kitchen, and then we'll kind of go back and go through which pieces I added and how I kind of put them all together. So now you can see I've added in different CAD blocks for both the living room and the kitchen. I've kind of gone to the point of adding in plates and cups on the kitchen table, adding in hobs, um, a kitchen sink here, a bin by the back door, a doormat, and you can see I've kind of updated the hatch as well so that now travels around the objects I've put in. So that's kind of neat and tidy. And all of these CAD blocks I've made, I've broken up, made onto their own new block and also given it and put it on the correct layer for my drawing. So if I go back to my layout page, you can see that these now have the correct line weight that matches the rest of my drawing. And it's now starting to look a little bit more lived in, a little bit more habitated, hab and got a bit more habitation sort of added into it and it gives it just that next level of detail which will really kind of bring your plans alive and kind of make your drawings speak a few more words and kind of tell a bit more of a story rather than just acting as static drawings in their own right. And I want to take a moment to just look at how to add in plant life and trees and different animation for the garden in this particular plan. Adding in trees and vegetation is sometimes quite a tricky thing to do in a 2D plan drawing. So we're going to kind of look at the different ways that I usually do to tackle that. I'm going to start with drawing out some trees. So I've actually downloaded and added in some CAD blocks of some 2D trees and a lot of these are very basic. And usually I kind of don't really use these straight up because they're kind of a bit crude for what I'm trying to do. But there are ways you can kind of take these basic outlines of trees and sort of make them a bit more your own. So I'm going to just take this simple one here and we're going to move it into the back garden of my plan, which is somewhere down here, I think. We're going to try and make a few different trees. So like before, I'm just going to explode that CAD block out. And because my plan's being cut at this level, it would actually mean that my tree trunk is probably being cut as well. So I'm going to draw my tree trunk in a different layer. We're going to draw it in the section mid layer because it's actually a cut line that's being cut in the section. And I'm just going to turn on my near snap. And I'm actually going to, instead of using a strict circle, tree trunks are never perfectly circular. We're just going to kind of draw a rough sort of shape. I'm just kind of randomly clicking around just to give it a little bit more uniqueness there for the tree trunk and I'm going to get rid of that circle. I'm also going to put in a crosshair at my center point of my tree so we can denote exactly kind of where that tree sits and we can use the crosshair to kind of move the tree into an accurate position and it, you often see this is kind of a notation when trees are added in that they'll have a crosshair at their center point so I'm just going to draw this in just for sort of diagrammatic reasons I'm going to put that on the annotation lines because it's not a part of the drawing it's more of an annotation there now with the kind of canopy or the top of the tree because this is technically above my line of drawing. I'm actually going to make this a dashed line. Um, I do have my above layer here, which is sort of a dotted line, so I think I'm going to just add it to that layer for now. And I'm going to center this just to that point there. So it's a bit more centered to my tree. And I'm just going to have a look and see what that looks like. I might do some adjustments to it after that. So. So there we go, it's kind of looking a bit more technical now. So we've got the tree trunk which is being cut and we've got kind of a dotted canopy of the tree above. And actually I might change that line type on my above line. I think it's currently set to a dot. And we're just gonna change that to more of a dash, similar to my annotation. There we go. Maybe I'll make a new one in a bit, but I think for now that kind of works. So it's got like a, da a dotted canopy so we can tell that it's actually sitting above my cut line, make this line a bit thinner, I think. Now, if I want to add a kind of 
a few trees and add a bit of variation. Something I'll do is I'll probably make this into a block just from that center point using the crosshair we made. And then once that's made, ah, you see now it's because I've made it into a block, it's now changed that line type. So actually, what I do instead is instead of making it into a block, we're just going to group it for now. And then I'm just going to make a few copies of the tree. Let's copy around this plan a bit. Have one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and I'm going to just use the gumball just to rotate a few of these trees around. So it gives it a little bit of variation. We can also scale them a bit to make some bigger and some smaller. And you kind of just want to sort of go around and just add a little bit of variation into these trees so they all look unique and like not like they're the same model that's just been rotated around. So then if I go back to my plan drawing you can see there that that's starting to kind of fill it in nicely and we've got a bit of variation. They do look quite unique, each tree, and they've each got that crosshair as well to help sort of centre them to that point. So that's just a simple way of doing trees and it's very easy just taking that CAD block and just making it a little bit more unique and adding a bit more detail into there. You could also as well just add in planting. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll have sort of rocks that you might add in to your planting just to kind of give it a bit of character. One way of doing that is just simply to use the line tool and to draw these in. And you can just kind of just draw in a random shape. And you can do the same thing. I might probably add that onto my elevation line. And add a few of these in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around adding a few rocks in and we're going to take some of these other CAD blocks, make them a bit smaller and make them into bushes. And I'm just going to go around and decorate the garden. So I'm going to pause the video, add those bits in, and then we're going to go back over what I've added and how I've done that. So, so there you can see I've added in a few bushes, some rocks in there, a bit of paving coming off the driveway. And you can see if I go back to my layout page now, how these are kind of working. I've also put a very faint hatch just to sort of give a bit of texture to the grass on the outside. So you can see a difference between the paving and the grass layer here. So the kind of more detail and the more elements you add in all kind of add to your drawing. And as long as you're using those layers we've set up in the previous videos to help you with that, then everything will kind of go together nicely and you can still see the hierarchy between the walls we're cutting and then all the kind of extra bits of vegetation and trees and bushes that we're adding on as kind of an extra layer of detail on top of that as well. And all of this will add and give life to your drawings and kind of add that next level of storytelling. And you can really sort of paint the picture of what it's like to be living in these spaces. So it's not just a static 2D drawing, but it's actually conveying something a bit more. So the last part of this session, and to finish up this drawing, we're going to look at adding in a title block and scale bars and north markers onto this drawing and these are kind of the final layer of annotations you might do to finish off a drawing before you go and print it out. So to do that we're going to be working in our layout page and we're going to make a new layer which we're going to have the title blocks on and this is going to kind of give us a thickness and line weight to the title we're going to add in. So in my layout layers I'm just going to make a new layer and call it title and we're going to just keep it black for now. And we'll set the print width of this to quite a thin line because we don't want to kind of overpowering the rest of the drawing. We'll put it at a 0.18 for now. So what I might first do is I'm just going to give a border to this drawing. Um, by default the border of your detail view will not print when you print it out. So if you wanted a border on your drawing you're going to have to manually draw one in. I'm just going to draw that round like so. And it might be that you want to kind of add a title at the bottom 
I'll add in the link of this video some kind of example title blocks that you can get on drawings usually but the key we'll just go through now the kind of key elements that all of them have in so we'll start with north marker this can simply look like a circle like so if you put your center snap on we can then like that and it might be that you want this north mark to be slightly thicker so sometimes I'll just change this onto my section layer so it's a thicker line like so it's very simple and obviously point it in whatever direction north is what I'll usually do at this point as well that if my drawing isn't already I'll center my drawing up to my page so this is kind of my center line here so an easy way to do that is just to draw a line on your layout page which is in the center then if you select your detail view and select that line you can then move it and snap it to the midpoint like so so now the middle of my drawing is centered up like so what I'm also going to do is I'm actually going to line this detail line up with these edges but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it upwards and give myself a bit of space at the bottom to add in my relevant title points. So let's just move the drawing up. Just by selecting that viewpoint and moving it upwards. We'll move it up by 40 mil. You'll notice that because I've drawn these lines in my layout view. When I move my detail view, they don't move as well, so I'll have to also move those lines upwards. And because I did it by a fixed amount of 40, I know how to move them, so if I just move those up by 40 as well. They're back in their correct place. They should be, right? I think I just slightly moved my plan off there. So I'll just kind of line those up again. So here we go, and we can just snap these back into the correct place. That's okay. And then I'm going to just tidy this up and trim off these extra lines here. So then it might be that you want to add a kind of title block down at the bottom, so just back in that title layer. going to move my north marker down there and the kind of information you usually want to contain on a drawing like this would be uh, north marker location you may want a scale bar um, an easy way of doing this you can I usually just draw one from scratch which I then use in all my drawings so for this drawing which is 1 to 50 you probably want to draw a five centimeter box here so And then you can just mark on your different lengths in that section box, which I'll do now. So you may end up with something like this, or just a simple scale bar with the distances measured on there. Um, once you've made one, you can then copy it onto all your drawings, obviously, as well. And also what you might want to have in this is a title, which you could just do adding in text, and also a drawing scale. So we're just going to call this plan. Or maybe we'll call it ground floor plan. And we'll make this a bit larger. And we'll just note the scale. Now you might also want to add a key onto this drawing or kind of any other features but for now I'm just going to keep it simple like that and sort of let you guys work out what extra bits you'd want to add into your drawings. So once you've made a title block and maybe you want to add it on to lots of different drawings you could either do that by when you make a new page, if I made a new A3 portrait layout here, we could either just 
take that title block and just copy it and then paste it onto our page like so and just get rid of that detail view and any of these. That's one way you can do it or you could select those lines and you could export selected and just export them as a Rhino file and then when you want to bring them in so let's say let's just call that one for now or title block and once they're exported all you have to do is then go file import them if this was a new file for example go to your downloads or wherever you've saved them and then it will import it in as well so once you've saved that then you can import that in and add it to all your drawings so that's it for this first session we've looked at the creation of the plan from simply starting off with a reference drawing over it adding in the external walls adding in doors detail internal partitions and then adding in cad blocks and furniture dimensions on there and annotations and adding this all to a layout page and setting those line weights up so they all read together now the kind of more work and more kind of things you add into your plans the better they're going to look so it's all about sort of putting the time in and putting the effort into the drawing and kind of building those up from the ground up it's all quite simple moves but when you add them all together they can make really compelling drawings over the course of time so I think we're looking for you guys to really sort of go to town with your plans adding in lots of detail and try and use these techniques to really elevate your drawings to that next level so as a final thing once you're happy and done with your drawing to print it like we covered in the last session you just right click on that layout page go to print make sure your destination is a PDF and make sure your output scale is it one to one and you can check here in the preview and print it and we're just going to save it as a PDF and that's done and then you can check that it's printed okay like so and there's our plan drawing now I'll upload this final file and also the PDF as part of the video so you can kind of check through and maybe copy the layers if you want to from this and go from there and then next week we'll be running a kind of Q&A session and also a sort of troubleshooting session for if you have any questions of this in relation to your own work and we'll kind of see how you got on with these initial sessions and I'll be kind of on hand to give any feedback and help you out of any questions you might have with your own project work. Hope you found that helpful and look forward to seeing you all next week.